Hello everybody, it is me, Andrew, and this is going to be a uh, review, reveal, show and tell unboxing of the Marseille Tarot, uh, the professional edition uh, by Lo Scarabeo and the actual, uh, the actual author, or, or oh, um, the person who made this edition is Anna Maria Morisucci. And um, so this is the box. So this box is like fucking huge. So I did not know. I'll show you guys how big the cards are. I had no idea. I thought that maybe the cards were like divided into two and that there was like a guidebook on top. No, <laughs> not at all. <laughs> so this is a, this is my hand. This is the size of this box. Like it is ginormous. So that's why I can't hardly fit in the frame. And then the gold kind of makes it hard to see. But this is the box. Beautiful box. I'm actually really here for the box. Um, and the back is just like pretty much every, um, Los Garibaldi has it in different languages. Um, Nicholas Conver, Anna Maria Morsucci, and then Matea Odellini. Um, an extraordinary work, the result of a, wait, the result of a through symbolic, maybe they meant thorough, Thor. Symbolic and um, iconographic research by Anna Maria Morsucci. Uh, the deck designed by Mattia Odellini is based on the 1760 Marseille Tarot by Nicholas Conver, with additional elements derived from 26 different editions of this classical and ancient deck. So this is actually interesting. Um, um, before I go in any further, I this was this is a copy that I was sent um, to review. So I did not pay for this copy. I do not even actually own. Um, a Marseille deck, which is interesting because I thought that I would at least have one by now. Like, I don't have a Thoth Tarot either. Um, I just don't. Um, so this is a review copy. So I don't, I've never really experienced Marseille Tarot. Um, but I'm excited about it though. So this is the book. And the book obviously fits in the frame a little better. Um... And, um, it's all, you know, they have different languages. I think it's, um, let me see what the languages are. Um, Italian, Portuguese, French, uh, I don't know my flags, sorry. Um, but there's a lot, there's a lot of different languages. <laughs> um, oh, oh, here we go. I guess Russian, maybe, uh, Portuguese. French, Spanish, Italiano, and English. So, um, this is very, um, this is a very, like, short and sweet. So, we have meaning of numbers, meaning of colors, and then we have major arcana keywords, and we have major, minor arcana keywords, and that's it. Like, that's pretty much what the guidebook is. Um, so, I mean, if you're just, like, beginning then and we have tuning into the cards, asking the right questions, um, and that's about it. So it goes from page what? Page seven to twenty-five. So and then the rest of it's different languages. Actually not that bad of a of a guidebook really, and the pages are kind of glossy. But when I tell you guys, like I was shook as fuck um when, uh when I opened this box. I was like, holy shit. Like, these cards are fucking huge. Um, okay, so this is the title card, which I can literally use for a fan. Like, I can literally just be like, and just, just for a scale, let me, this is a traditional size tarot card. Look at this shit. It's huge. Um, it's crazy. I don't even know, I'm not even going to be able to shuffle them. But I'm sure there's a reason, like, why they're this big. Um, because it's the professional edition. It's not no bitch edition. This is the professional edition. Um, this is the backing of the cards. It's like orangey. It's cute. Um, and so I, I'm kind of going to be exploring this Marseille deck with you guys. Um, I am aware that Marseille decks are kind of pip decks. So there's not um, a whole lot of like illustrated minor cards. Except for court cards. So I'm aware of that. Um, but we're going to break this down. So the cardstock is actually like 
this is literally the, let's see, let me make sure. Yeah, this is literally the, just, just the uh, major arcana. <laughs> I cannot get over this. It is so funny. Okay. Um, so this, oh, sorry. This is the fool. See, I can't do, I can't hold this deck. I have to just like prop it up. Yeah, there we go. That's the fool. The magician. So this is like obviously not in. I'm guessing that's French. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's French. Um, the magician. So some kind. Of, so some like, you know. And then I'm sure the guidebook actually goes into it. But some of the like, you need some kind of tarot knowledge for this. But the color key actually is really interesting as far as like this deck doesn't use too many colors. Um, I think if you look at the oh, shit. I think if you look at the color guide. Oops. Where is it? Where is it? Oh. One, two, three. Black, white, blue. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So, like, eight colors. So, I mean, eight colors for just using eight colors in a whole deck. It's kind of crazy. Um, but, I mean, it, it, it's kind of cool, too, so... I've never had a Marseille deck, so I really don't know what to expect. Um, the, wait, I missed a card. High Priestess, Empress. Wait, is this set up different? Because that should be, hold on. This is interesting. Okay, Empress, Emperor. Oh, got it. Okay, so this is the High Priestess. Okay, so I thought it was the Hierophant because the Papess, but or the Papess. Okay, we're, we're back. We're trucking. Uh, the Lover's Card. Which I think is actually kind of cute. Um, I like the little angel. A little chair right there. The chariot. Oh. Justice. The hermit. Hermite. <laughs> or the hermite, probably. <laughs> hermite. We have a hermite problem. <laughs> the wheel of fortune. Uh, strength. The Hanged Man. I wonder what these words mean. Death card. Um, which is interesting because I have seen death cards that are like this with the scythe or whatever. So I'm wondering if there are some death cards in some like Rider Waite Smith clones that are actually more reminiscent of the Marseille death card than the actual death card. Temperance, Diable, the devil. Huh. The tower. The star. La loon. La lune. The moon, the sun, judgment, the world, and that was the major arcana. And so now we have, I'm going to have to split these decks out because if I, well, let me see. No, I'm not going to do that. I'll break my computer. It's a lot of pressure. We will just start with this. So the miners don't have any like titles like Ace of Cups or I about said One of Cups. Jesus. So this is the Ace of Cups. So we have some Los Garibayo stuffs uh, right there. This reminds me of One Fish, Two Fish, Red Fish, Blue Fish. Just throwing that out there. Two of Cups. 
three of cups. So if you don't have any like any tarot like working tarot knowledge, um, I would say maybe a Mars side deck. Unless you're super drawn to one, maybe a Mars side deck wouldn't be the greatest. Unless you have a really good book to go along with it. Um, because like if you see five cups here, you're just like, uh the fuck? So I, I would say if you have a really good book or like this book, um, the guidebook here gives you keywords, which is awesome. But just be very like, be very mindful of the fact that if you want like a more in-depth book, um, find one of those if you're super just, you have to have a more side deck. Um, so don't think that, you know, you have to get a more side deck. You can get a Rider Waite deck. You can get a Thoth, well, Thoth would be a lot to start out with, but... Um, so it has the, it does have numbers on the side. You just have to know what you're looking at. So five, six. So just be very, just be kind of, if you're new to tarot, kind of keep that in your back pocket. The Amara side deck is meant, for, uh, to me, is meant for people that have a working tarot knowledge. Um... So this is just Nine of Cups, which is actually my favorite, one of my favorite minor arcana cards. And the Ten of Cups. And then we have Illustrated, um, Page, Knight, Queen, King. And now we're in Coins, um, Pentacles, Discs, uh, you know, whatever you want to call it is... Whatever helps you live your best life. So two discs, low scare but yeah, that's interesting. I, I, to be honest, I I, I kind of get it, but when I first saw this card, I thought that it was just like an extra title card, like oh you chose the two of pentacles to kind of put in the deck, um, as to, to duplicate it so you they know this low scare but yeah. So I, I feel like this part was unnecessary, but. I digress. Because the low scare bay was literally all over everything else. Uh, three. Okay, so it looks like the pentacles don't have numbers on. That's weird. I wonder why the pentacles wouldn't have numbers, but the cups would. The wands do. Huh. Okay. Whatever. Maybe because it's circles, so you know that it's not part of the filigree. Maybe. Seven, eight, nine, ten, and page, knight, queen, king. All right. Yeah, I, I wish that even just for consistency's sake that the pentacles had the um the numbers hmm. so wands this reminds me of green eggs and ham i do not like green eggs and ham i do not like them see my ham so see two but i guess this could be confused as filigree so i mean it makes sense like i'm saying for consistency's sake i would like to see it, it across the whole deck but I guess, like, if you're looking at this, you're like, am I looking at these or am I looking at this? So, I get it. Just, you know, I like things to be nice and consistent. So, I mean, this is pretty much going to be four, five, I mean, seven, eight, Oh, that, sorry, that was what card was that? That's nine? That's not the Roman numeral for nine. Uh, okay. <laughs> um, let me see if the other ones have the same Roman numeral for nine. Because that seems to be... Yep. I wonder if that's like a, an, like an Italian thing, but they're using Roman numerals for like literally everything else. So 
Like, is it a thing to not do that? Leave that in the comments. Is it a thing to use the V and then, like, four? Because I've always seen nine as, like, a one or an I and then an X. That's... Yeah. Mind of my business. Uh, so, page, knight, queen, king, boom. Um, swords. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, nine, ten. Page, knight, queen, and king. So now I'm going to attempt to shuffle these big bitches and see what we've got. This is how I had to shuffle them. Look at this. I'm just like, uh -huh, uh -huh. Oh my God. I wonder what the necessity was of making cards this big. Ah, of course I drew the devil card. Of course I did. Because it's literally my favorite card in tarot. Like, literally my all-time favorite. So let's see what this says about the devil. Instinct, ego, independence. That's all you get. So let's go a little bit deeper into the death card. So if you're watching this, if you're watching this the day I posted, if you're watching this three years from now, this card is meant for you. Right there. Right here. So the devil card asks us to look at the thoughts that we're thinking that are keeping ourselves trapped in cycles that are not serving us. So if you have really shitty thoughts, then you can't, you, you can't get out of it if you keep thinking shitty thoughts. You can get past this. They could literally slip these little thingies over their heads and like get out. But they're choosing not to because they're choosing to say, oh, I'm bound, so I'm bound. So when it comes to the devil card, really, really watch out what you become dependent on. Watch out if you become dependent on things that are outside of yourself because you are truly the only source of power that you need. So anything else that's like distracting you or whatever is not, um, is not here for it. We're not here for it. It's not cute at all. So this is just, this card is so big. Um... So this has been a review, reveal, unboxing, show and tell of the Marsai Tarot, the professional edition. Right there. Um, so I, I, I'm very interested to work with this deck and see how Marsai actually works out for me. Because I have a working knowledge and understanding of tarot, so I feel like I won't really need the guidebook as much to just go for it. I think the thing I am going to study with this deck are the colors that are used in Marsai. Um... That's going to be interesting to me. So if you want to learn how to read cards for yourself using your intuition um, and really tapping into that glorious tool that you have, you can actually go to the book a reading link and, and snag my how to read a fucking card course. Um, it is totally self-guided. There's a wonderful journal um, journaling process for tarot and oracle cards um, as well as videos. So you can snag that in the link below if you're interested in learning more about tarot and how to read cards. There's also a psychic development course that I do as well. And of course, you can book a reading um, if you feel so inclined to do so. You can even suggest that I use the, the big ass deck and I'll, and I'll use it for you. Um, but yeah, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe below. Thank you again to Llewellyn for sending me this deck. I'm really, I'm really excited to work with it. It's, it's actually a, it's a huge ass deck. So I'm really, uh, I'm interested to see how it works for me. But yeah, I hope you are having a wonderful morning, evening, noon, afternoon, night, whatever it is for you. Um, and I'll be seeing you soon.